Week. This is Mala Brusa with another Mala Travel Guide today. And we're going to be talking about today. Um, I know we left off yesterday on um, things that I was discerned with that been happen on, happening in town. And today, so happy, today is Battle Red Day. Today is Houston Rockets play the Pistons today, so I'm excited. I have my uh, Rockets pin, my uh, Houston Texas pin from a uh, greater partnership that gave me this. And this is the Rockets actually new logo, one mission, and then a Rockets, the Rockets number five Kenny Smith um, throwback jersey. Okay. You know these earrings made from a Ghana uh, citizen and this is made by the same person. I took off the hat, but I have no rockets on today. To throw that rockets um, hat. So that's what it is. So um, but I'm so glad to come here today and um, let y'all know, y'all. I know the last time I um, stopped off that I was just telling the things that I was disappointed in and things that I was uh, not happy with, how pe how business-minded people were treating other entrepreneurs that were not in their circle. And uh, I've had to deal with this a lot um, because when people look at me, they think, I guess that I'm very young and that I don't know much and I'm not, I don't know if it's not, I don't think it's I'm not intelligent, but it's just thinking that I don't know what they think I know. And then when they see me in the space where I know a lot of people that in their circle, they're like, whoa, okay, how does she, you know? And then they switch their, they switch their attitude on, they trick me. You know, that's why I always, like in Houston, we always talk about, like, you don't know who's interlinked. You just don't know who's connected to who. And that's why you have to be nice to everybody because you don't know who that other person might be. You know what I mean? And with that being said, you just have to really treat people how you want to be treated. You know, with support, love, uh, you know, just really be there, be present. And, uh, but you know what? I'm thankful for all the um, obstacles I, that I've had to uh, encounter and all the barriers I had to really uh, step through and walk out on faith to actually get through those days. I am back at Starbucks here and um, with another um, Mala Speak segment. And I just wanted to, um, just I was just really just excited and happy that, um, that I pushed through those difficult times because I could have quit at any time, any point in that, in my journey, in my path, and I chose not to, and I just chose to handle it with care and love and consideration, and, you know, I know I left off yesterday talking about how um, there are people that don't want me to win, and just want, you know, just in general. And, and that is a, a disservice to people my age and even younger that the um, older generation do not allow you to have the opportunity to be a prodigy, to be a, a to have a, to be a mentor, to you know, do all these things that used to exist at one time, they no longer want to do that anymore, which I don't understand why. And it's just, 
saddens me that people are nonchalant and just really don't care about anybody but themselves. And this is what America is. It's a very selfish uh, place. And people are only looking out for themselves. Even when they feel like they made it, that they still do not go down and help somebody else. Even though they're up here saying they, you know, go to church and they're Christians. Even Christians don't do what they're supposed to do. And it is discerning to see that that is the temperature that we're at right now. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It doesn't matter, religious or not, um, that that is how it is now. Um, but I choose not to conform to that to the world. I choose not to conform to those uh, infirmities. I choose not to conform to that uh, stigma and that um, that slave mentality that I am, you know, I'm the master of all these people and they have to follow and do what I do. No, I don't I don't like that kind of thing because I want to do what makes me feel good and makes me feel comfortable and what's true to me and what's true to my small circle around me. And, you know, it's just, I, I talk about um, my struggles. I talk about my, you know, um, people try to copyright uh, some of my videos and things that I post. This lipstick, man. I love this lipstick. I don't even know the name of it. But it always gets stuck to my teeth. Like, I'm so mad. I love it. But it always gets stuck to my teeth. It's called RLC 08 Brown Honey. But it always gets stuck to my teeth. Anyway. So, um, you'll see me lick my teeth a lot. Because this lipstick is a wrap. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, I just, all my struggles that I've been through, and I just, I try to push through, and, um, you know, I, and it's funny because I really, um, linked up with some, some, uh, some people, and to try to, they were talking about gentrification and the East End and Magnolia area, which was predominantly at one time was Chinatown, and now it switched to um, all um, Mexican and uh, yeah, Spanish descent area where people live now. Um, it's a prime location. It's close to the Ship Channel, and a lot of people that are foreigners work at the ship channel so that would that's a good place for them to be and that's what a lot of workers live because it's close proximity to the golf and to um, the ship channel for them to get back and forth to work because we have like welders and um, plumbers and all these things that work on the ships so they like to live in east end and magnolia area because that's it's close proximity to their job and it take them no time to get to work so, uh, but yeah, the historical piece behind that uh, is that uh, I got with the, a group. Um, I don't know if I have the information with me. Hopefully I do. I'm looking at my notes. And they were talking about how gentrification was affecting East End Magnolia area. And how uh, they wanted to do what they can to put a stop to that and because it's like developers they come in and say oh you know we want to do this and this and this and then they ended up not and they don't hold up to their bargain and they build things that not necessarily that's good for our city but it's good for them because they're going to make money off of it so once what that was like not a prime location that people uh, like to be is now a prime location so people uh, all these business owners were trying to buy out and drive up the rent to push these people out like homeowners and residential and commercial uh, areas here in town and I'm trying to find this man but I don't know if I can find it 
I don't know. I can't find it. Um, but yeah, they were talking about that. Um, and uh, I had reached out to some. So they were just like, so they came on the light rail system and they were like, uh, I need to post a video of them. And they were like, hey guys, we have, um, we have this going on and everything like that. So I was like, okay, what's going on? I'm, you know, a writer and I, you know, like to talk about stuff that's going on. Time. Oh, I found one. I got, you know, no stuff that's going on in this area, and I like to do tours in this area because it's a historical area. Um, but they're called um, incinerary. Okay. And hopefully you got that. Because sometimes I be doing it so quick and y'all can't see it. And um, the writer of this um, this newsletter, I got to talk to him, and um, he was really nice. Um, he would like he wanted to he wants to collaborate with me on my experience in gentrification. Um, and how that affected me and how that's related to what's happened in Houston because um, with everything that's going on because while I was in Ohio, gentrification was happening before I left there and they were moving all the elderly out of the high-rise building and moving them to like Westerfield and all these outside further places further than downtown but they couldn't get back and forth to their doctors, which was downtown. So they were trying to move them out and raise the rent up high so they wouldn't be able to afford to live there anymore because, you know, they're on public assistance, Social Security or SSI um, and, um, you know, Medicaid and all this other stuff that they're on and basically like low income. So, um, but yeah, they were talking about um, the plan to gentrification East, East Houston faces early opposition. They're talking about uh, East End and they're talking about Fifth Ward. Fifth Ward is a historical black neighborhood. Now it's trying to change. Now, um, historical black neighborhood, it has a lot of people, a lot of civil uh, activists have lived in that area and um, hopefully we can be able to protect that um, that landmark area because it is historical to our city and it's historical to um, all the civil rights activists that lived in that uh, area for so long. So we want to really protect that. Um, but yeah, they were talking about, you know, talking about gentrification. I don't want to go into this whole thing, but I will post a picture of this and post it on my Instagram page, Marla Speaks One. On Instagram and um, so y'all can see some of the things that are happening here in Houston and it I mean to be honest it's happening everywhere it's happened in Ohio it's happening everywhere um, that this is happening even they t said that it's been happening in, in Austin um, they have uh, one area that they are targeting um, which they have said that's prime location or prime um, building and they're trying to move all those people out. Um, I don't know too much information about Austin because i only been to Austin one time and I don't really have a lot of information about that, but this group does, the uh, people that write about it does. Uh, but I know about my city Houston. Um, and I don't know everything either. I'm still learning myself, so I don't know everything. But while I was, like, I meet a lot of people in different places. And, oh, I, to finish up on this, um, I am going to be um, uh, doing this paper with them and collaborate with them about gentrification uh, and gentrification in Houston and how it's affected me and how um, I've seen change uh, in my neighborhood and in my area. So hopefully y'all be seeing that soon, okay? Um, I want to talk about mental health, okay? I was at um, an event 
and they were talking about well oh the state of black the state of black women event so they were talking about mental health a lot of mental health well there were experts on there from Texas Children, Methodist, um, MB Anderson, all these, you know, top tier uh, hospitals here in Houston. But they didn't give you, the, the take back is that they didn't give you a resource in order to go to if you have issues with mental health or mental issues. Well, I do. Hey. <laughs> so. I found a group called National Alliance on Mental Illness and they have different classes you can go to and it's very awesome because the guy that I met he has mental illness and his name is Dave uh, Winchester and he um, he does classes through uh, the National, what is it again? The National Alliance of Mental Illness. And so he goes out to different, like, we have a, a it's called the Harris County uh, Health District. And he goes around to different areas, mostly mental health areas, and he talks about uh, uh, NAMI or National Alliance on Mental Illness to people to make them aware of what's going on in town. And they have different groups you can be a part of. So this is North Harris Center for Mental Health and IDD. It's a place where you can, uh, for free, go there and you can get assessed and find out your mental needs and they can help you. You can do a walk-in. You have to be there early, like about, I think, 9 is the earliest, 839. And you can do a walk-in, and you can see somebody to find out, you know, to assess your, maybe you need counseling, maybe you need, uh, you know, uh, groups, and they'll help you to navigate that for you. They'll give you the research you need. So these are one of the, the things that he was talking about. And so they have a class called Mindful Meditation. It's on uh, Thursdays from 9 to 10. And they have Creative Expressions, which is on Thursdays, 10, 30 to 12. And then they have a Wellness on Wednesday, 10, 30 to 12. And they have a Cultivated Calmness, Wednesdays from 9 to 10. Okay, and it says if you want to RSVP, it says please RSVP the day before, um, and you need to RSVP with Beth Sable. Her cell number is eight three two nine six three zero 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 zero, or Mary Sabrito. Cell phone number eight three two three one seven five six six nine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and this is pretty cool, but in order to go, you have to go get assessed first and to make sure that, um, that you are, um, you have to be a client first to receive it, okay? So you have to get assessed at this, at this, uh, this place, okay? And they will help you to get what you need here in Houston, Texas. Um, they have a guide called Mental Health America of Houston. It's at 2211 North Fork, Suite 810, Houston, Texas 77098. Um, you can reach out to them on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, and their website is mhahouston.org. So, but yeah, that's what's going on. So basically, that's what's going on. But I just want to talk about uh, mental health um, and how to make sure your mental capacity is what it needs to be. And 
that's very, very important and, uh, in your walk, uh, in your spirituality, in your mental capacity, to, and rest is actually essential to you uh, having everything you need. Please, y'all get, make sure y'all get y'all rest because in order to deal with the things that we have going on, we really need to focus on our health and well-being and our mental capacity because that's very important. And on this, on this pamphlet I got the, um, on the guide, they have different resources that you can call, okay? It's a lot, y'all. So, it's running back. Um, but from uh, children, adolescent, teen, behavioral health services to behavioral health for elderly to service for veterans to social and specialized services, domestic violence and sexual assault, education and employment support, health and disability related services, homelessness services, legal services, um, adult and family mental health services, and adult alcohol and drug services. I like this. This is awesome. Like, I, this is really good. Um, this is really good. So, yeah, this is a great tool. So, yeah, I would go to their website to see if this guide is on there. So yeah, this is really can help y'all out, um, people that are dealing with that. Um, yeah, is the Mala is the resource uh, connection, and I want to just make sure that during the holiday season is a season that a lot of people get sad and a lot of people have uh, their stress level goes up uh, because of maybe a loss of family or um, that having family close to them just um, have dealing with their own life issues anyway. So I really want to um, be diligent to really showcase it that this is very, very important and I just want y'all to be aware of that and that I want you to be um, concerned that this is a problem and it should be addressed at, you know, the given time frame. But, uh, yeah, so, um, I know during the holidays, oh, well, I told y'all that I am saving up, um, and doing a lot of saving because I want to go on a huge trip, and I'm getting all my ducks in a row, and I have to reevaluate some stuff, and I'm just like, you know what? I was just really spending like too much stuff on just nothing and I really wanted to focus on the stuff that's important to me and I, sometimes I do stuff, I mean do things that I want to do instead of doing stuff that I need to do and it's so many events I want to go to so so bad, so so bad but I just, I just really can't right now. Um, because my mind is focused on a goal to travel and that's what my mind is focused on um, and and it's going to be very expensive um, I'm going to have help but still um, I'm the type of person that I like to I like to do stuff that I want to do and, and it's my funds, I can do what I want. You know what I mean? With other people's funds, I gotta do. I still can do what I want, but I then I have to do what they. I'm contractually obligated to do. You know, and that's like a little harder for me to do. Um, I want to impact the most people as possible, um, and you know, be happy about it. Uh, so yeah. I wanted to um, talk about like things that are like very that are going on and I use a lot of times that 
I am really a happy, uh, energetic person, and, you know, just wilding out and pretty cool. And there's the other times that I'm calm and settle, like at work. I'm like, you know, quiet and to myself, get my work done and everything. And it's like a dynamic has changed um, just because of I've always been in a space where like people are intimidated or people are like trying to figure out why I am the way I am and and try to uh, antagonize me and to the point where like to make me upset and like yesterday I was working and it was just it was tough it was tough um, I love what I do and um You know how you ever been so been this space somewhere and every time you go to this space you like your stomach starts not out and you start feeling like <coughs> sick, like throwing up sick. Like all of a sudden, like for no reason. And that's sometimes how I've been feeling like that lately. I've been feeling like that. Like it's nothing different I've been eating or anything, it's nothing my diet is still the same, but it's like, I can tell toxicity, toxicity areas is a moment I walk in, you know what I mean, just toxicity for no reason, like none, and, and I, I feel that, I haven't feel that knotting in my stomach, my pit of my stomach, my, like, I can tell my energy going, ooh, 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 ooh. like, you know, on Mario, how you see the, um, the levels in his energy going down, yeah, that's how I feel, like, that's how I've been feeling the past, all this week, I've been feeling like that, I don't know where that's coming from, I don't know where that's coming from, and, you know, I'm just like, man, where's this coming from, and I just, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I think I know what it is. Um, and I just think that, you know, thank goodness I can recognize that when my energy is at an all time low. And um, people see that. People see, like, you know, are you, you know, they're like, are you okay? This and that. And, um, you know, you know, I just see it's a difference. Um, it's a difference in morale. It's a difference in how being African in the African diaspora and being a black woman in Houston and being um, the only African American in a lot of spaces that I'm in. It's very hard to... Um, decipher how if people want the best for you or people try to be vindictive and want the worst for you and sometimes it takes time to get that and sometimes you can you can see it immediately so this has been a gradual thing that I've been seeing that um, in certain spaces that I've had to deal with for me and and I keep asking, I keep wondering, you know, ask, and, you know, asking my forefathers answers, and, you know, why, why, why could I keep get, getting in these situations? Why, why does this keep happening? To me? Why are people um, intimidating me? Why are people threatened by me? Why are people like so afraid for Lala to get shot? Like, why don't? Why are they doing that? know and and I think sometimes I think that people do that because 
they see something in me that they want and they don't have. Did you hear that? They see something in me that they want and they can't have. So, needless to say, that's what it is. So sometimes you have to treat it as such as it as that. And keep being who you want to be. And despite the op op opposition, despite what other people do, you still have to be you at the end of the day. So, this is the end of Bala Speak session. We'll see you next time. Brought to you by Bala Speaks. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bala Bruce Art is out. Bye.